in this one. Nil-nil, still the score. Not many threatening chances. Mach 10s through the midfield. Flurry as the nine, and an incisive ball for Daman. Can she shimmy her way free? Gets a touch past one. It's Chelsea Daman, and it's the first for Syracuse. The Orange are in front. That is a beautiful pass from Flurry Link. He got to DeMond, just like we talked about before the game. And I love the physicality from DeMond and the persistence, just staying with it and resets one on one. Nothing Dajane can do about that one. That is a textbook diagonal pass up to the forward. The first time clearance, Commandant tracking back. 50 50 challenge. The Orange come up with it. Savella to DeMond. Shakes free pass pressure inside for Roush. It's the second. Syracuse ahead yet again. And I thought this play was dead as soon as Dumont took that first touch, but she puts it on the perfect blade of grass for Ashley Roush. That is an insane pass. The precision to let the midfielder free on goal. One on one. No mistake. Tucked away. And after a world to hit the goal from Emma Tucker. Ashley Roush reinvigorates the Cuse. Here's Blue Ellis. She gets into the box and her shot rings off the post. It's in for a third. Syracuse finds an ACC win. What a way to cap off that first conference win. Persistence, again, the key word. Rounds her defender. That is an impossibly tough angle. There's Nicewanger setting things down for Nesmith. She follows up. Robbins with a little bit of an opening. Trying to get behind the defense. And Cicini saves it. Cross over the head of Makowitz. It's a goal for Jody Brown. Left foot strike from the Jamaican international. Already in the first 15 minutes. Your Clemson, this what are you gonna do to, to stop this this offense? Beautiful left foot one-timer from Jody Brown as you take another look. Just great connectivity going deep here to the end line, really stretches and gets Clemson out. Leads to success on the field and really plays into their comfort zone. Yeah, and there you here's Born Camp keeping coming up. Here's Florida Airplane. State, Garcia goes over to Brown. Tries to go to the box, cross into the box. And it's a touch finisher! What a goal. Third goal for Maria Alagoa. And it all started from that lost ball. Clemson almost had it over here. And you see that, dangerous. One, two, three, four, and in. Makowitz going off the line, trying to find, coordinate. Where's that? That pass wasn't really where it needed to be. Neither was that one by Olsen. Again, Clemson getting good possession. Uh-oh, a turnover here in a dangerous spot. Brown, go! Brace yourself, baby! That's a brace for Jody Brown. Second goal of the game. And even though Clemson came out with better possession, like I said early on, they make FSU makes the most of their opportunities. And this is really their one opportunity. And they got it in goal. That's a poor, poor decision by Clemson. You cannot give the ball that deep away, that go away that deep been on the ground a couple times that was a, a ball that got away from her a bit there's Malia Morris correction McKenna Morris 
Go at it, and she hits it. Denies Florida State the shutout. McKenna Morris delivers for the Clemson, and it's 3-1. Florida State with three minutes remaining. Something positive for Clemson to build off of here towards the end of the game. Second goal for Morris on the year. Here in the 87th minute. Another throw in from that far sideline for Pitt. Just over 17 minutes, no score yet. Here's a chance for Pitt now, sent on towards the goal. Second chance for Pace is put home. The Panthers strike first. It's Leah Pace continuing that hot streak she was riding coming into this contest. Talk about poacher's instincts, that's right there. The ability to get in the box, you know, chance comes to her, emphatic finish. You know, Naylor does well on the initial save to get a hand on it, you know, get rid of the ball, parry it out. But, you know, in the end, it falls to Pace, and Pace as a striker is not missing from there. Really nice finish, putting power on it, placing it well, and Pittsburgh have a 1-0 lead as a result. There's your now leading goal scorer for Pitt. Wingate has an opportunity on that right wing. Look to make a move towards the baseline. Sends it over to Hospek, who tips it, and she sends it home. Notre Dame with the equalizer. Ellie Hospek, second goal of the year. And that's the, the quality of an attacking wingback. She's able to get into the box. It's a really nice run by Ospec. You'll see here on the back post. Wingate does well to win the ball, create enough space for a cross, and Ellie Ospec crashing the box. That's the converted striker's instincts right there to get in there. A nice run here. You see Mercado sets this all up with a really nice ball. You know, the converted attacking mid going long. Wingate knows she doesn't have an angle on goal. She's going to go wide, look to create something. She wins. Fury, really good pass, has Landy Mertz, who has plenty of green grass in front of her. Mertz goes towards the right, fires a shot, and it's scored! A beautiful finish from Landy Mertz, the go-ahead for the Panthers. What an effort by Mertz there, you can't say enough about the finish. Catches Naylor just barely off her line, and what a what an effort to beat her. Does well to get into space, breaks out, you know, she has the angle, she could go all the way here. She stops up, she holds up, and just deftly shifts that ball, finds the perfect spot for it into the bottom left corner, and just a beautiful finish. Can't say enough about it. Goal number six for Mertz, and couldn't have come at a... ...about how much they've been able to lean on Mercado and Wingate when they needed a big goal. Are you trying to force it to him here? How, does, how do they kind of fit to the offensive game plan? I don't think there's ever a time to force it to any one player. You know, you kind of have to let the offense naturally run its route. And here's Pittsburgh back on the offensive attack. The header gives them a 3-1 to one lead over Notre Dame. I'm not, I'm trying to see where that one broke down for Notre Dame, but really just a long ball into the box and doesn't touch a Pittsburgh head. Just goes off Zuge, you know, Naylor's not ready for the ball to come back to her, expecting a clearance, and back of the net. Got as simple as an own goal as you'll find. 